Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Myself, Dr. Cecil Maria Jose. I am presenting today hypoglycemic emergencies as a part of EM Rapid 2024. Hypoglycemia is one of the most common scenario we usually encounter in ER. So there are three levels of hypoglycemia. That is level 1 hypoglycemia is the glucose level, blood glucose level is less than 70 mg per deciliter but more than 54. Level 2 is less than 54 which may require immediate action and it is associated with a cognitive impairment. And level 3 is the uh, level which the hypoglycemic event that requires assistance of another person to actively administer the carbohydrate, glucagon or other resuscitative actions. So how can we clinically diagnose hypoglycemia? That is by Whipple's triad. Whipple's triad is symptoms will be consistent with hypoglycemia. Uh, low plasma glucose concentration as measured by laboratory assays and resolution of hypoglycemic symptoms as the plasma glucose levels increase. So in a diabetic patients, uh, the onset of symptoms of hypoglycemia may occur at uh, sugars less than 70 milligram per deciliter. So symptoms of hypoglycemia, uh, it may include two types that is autonomic response and neuroglycopenia. Autonomic response will be like sweating, weakness, tachycardia palpitations, tremors, nervousness, hunger, paresthesias and neuroglycopenia it may be it may cause irritability, confusion, uncharacteristic behavior, seizures, occasionally transient focal neurological deficits, uh, la, uh, loss of consciousness and visual disturbances. So uh, if, the, if the patient or uh, diabetic patient is on beta blocker for any causes like any uh, cardiac failure or any hypertension, uh, this autonomic response will be masked by the beta blockers. So coming to assessment, uh, coming to history and physical examination, the patient's overall health status and a thorough history can help identify most of the likely causes of hypoglycemia. So coming to causes of hypoglycemia, uh, in Ill or, med Ill or medicated individuals, first one will be the drugs that is insulin or insulin secretagogues like mostly with insulin and sulfonylureas, alcohol others and in critical illness like hepatic, renal or cardiac failure, sepsis, malnourishment, uh, we usually see in CLD patients there will be a complication is hypoglycemia and hormone deficiencies like cortisol, glucagon and epinephrine and non islet cell tumors and in seemingly well individual there will be endogenous hyperinsulinism that is insulinoma or functional beta cell disorders, insulin autoimmune hypoglycemia, insulin secretagogue and sixth one is the accidental or malicious hypoglycemia. If a young uh, adult is coming with that is there is no history of any type 1 diabetes mellitus or type 2 diabetes mellitus, a young adult the, coming into ER uh, with the first episode of hypoglycemia, we should uh, draw the sample for insulin, serum insulin level, C peptide levels. That is we should uh, then only we have to correct the hypoglycemia to rule out an insulinomas. So the diagnosis is. Uh, always consider hypoglycemia as a potential cause of alter mental status for the patients arriving in ER. So failure to determine the blood glucose level early in the evaluation can result in uh, misdiagnosis and it can cause uh, mo uh, morbidity because of CNS injuries or unnecessary invasive procedures and therapies. And bedside glucose levels can be checked. Uh, the glucose values of whole blood are approximately 15% less than that of the plasma. In diabetic patients who develop hypoglycemia while taking the usual dose of sulfonylurea, you should suspect an underlying cause. In non-diabetic patients, as we said, without history of in, uh, any deliberate use of blood sugar lowering agents or obtain a serum sample before initiation of dextrose therapy and this should be sent for serum, insulin, pro-insulin and C-peptide levels. Coming to treatment. In patients with altered mental status, 50% dextrose in water should be administered as IV bolus. Uh, a dose of 50 ml, it may contain 25 grams of glucose. And it, if the hypoglycemia is persisting, the dose can be repeated every 15 minutes. When the blood, blood glucose level is more than 70 mg per deciliter and the patient regains consciousness, continue per oral carbohydrates. If blood glucose normalized and patient is unconscious, continuous IV infusion of dextrose at a rate to maintain the serum glucose level more than 100 mg per deciliter should be given. Check GRBS every 30 minutes for first 2 hours. Failure to respond to parenteral glucose administration should consider other causes of, other causes of hypoglycemia such as sepsis, toxins, 
insulinoma, hepatic failure or adrenal insufficiency. Uh, sulfonylureas can cause glucose stimulated insulin secretion. So, if you give glucose uh, in sulfonylurea toxicity, it may aggravate hypoglycemia. So, octatoid is a somatostatin analog and is able to suppress the insulin secretion immediately and is used in sulfonylurea toxicity. The dosage is 50 to 100 microgram subcutaneous injection. After a single hypoglycemic episode to serial subcutaneous injections that is 50 to 100 microgram every 6 to 8 hours or a constant IV infusion of 120 to 125 microgram per hour after a second hypoglycemic episode. The other agent is first is octatide, second is glucagon. It is a polypeptide hormone and it can cause approximate 100 milligram of deciliter increase in serum glucose in hypoglycemic agent patients. Response to glucagon is very slow that is it may take 7 to 10 minutes. So, in adult and glucagon is given as a 1 milligram subcutaneous or IM. The third one is diazoxide. It is used in refractory hypoglycemia induced by sulfonylureas. The action is it will, it, it will inhibit the insulin secretion from pancreatic beta cells and it can cause hypotension and should be administered very uh, as a slow IV infusion that is 300 milligram over 30 minutes every 4 hours. Coming to hypoglycemia in infants and children, the clinical features as said neurogenic that is autonomic symptoms and uh, neuro, neuroglycopenic symptoms are there. Uh, autonomic symptoms will be sim, sim, sweating, tremors, palpitations, tachycardia and hunger. This will occur when a plasma glucose is less than 55 to 60 milligram per deciliter and neuroglycopenic symptoms will be lethargy, confusion, irritability, loss of consciousness and seizures and it occurs if the plasma glucose level is less than 50 milligram per deciliter. Older children and ad adult, we can see the Whipple's triad. Infants and toddlers, they will show a non-specific symptoms that is irritability, lethargy, poor feeding, cyanosis, jitterness. Commonly, infants manifest no symptoms of hypoglycemia until they present with suddenly will present with hypoglycemic seizures. So, diagnosis will be normal plasma glucose is 70 to 100 milligram per deciliter after first week and the diagnostic threshold is less than 6, 50 milligram per deciliter and treatment goal should be the plasma glucose uh, should maintain more than 70 milligram per deciliter. Coming to treatment, glucose therapy, in conscious patient if the patient is conscious and cooperative 0.3 gram per kg of rapid acting carbohydrate can be given by mouth that is like 4 ounces of a juice, a tube of glucose gel or 4 glucose tablets. If the baby is in altered consciousness, initial bolus of 0.25 to 0.5 gram per kg of dextrose should be given. In infants and children up to 12 years, 2.5 to 5 ml per kg of dextrose 10 percentage should be given. In adolescents that is more than 12, more than or equal to 12 years, 1 to 2 ml per kg of D25 water can be given. And dextrose infusion, it is to prevent recurrent hypoglycemia. That infant should be started on glucose infusion uh, at a rate of 5 to 6 milligram per kilogram per minute. Older children, 2 to 3 milligram per kilogram per minute. If the child is unable to receive oral glucose and unable to obtain an IV access, give a glucagon 0.5 milligram. That is for if, if it is a child is less than 25 kilogram body weight or 1 mil milligram for more than or equal to 25 milligram per kilogram body weight IM or subcutaneous. Perform blood glucose uh, monitoring every 10 to 15 minutes. Establish a vascular access as soon as possible. So, this is all about hypoglycemic emergencies in adults and children. Thank you.